We have a special guest with us today, Dr. Prakash Shah. He is the director of Physio Health, Pain Management, and Performance Enhancement, and he is also the senior instructor for its research and teaching institute branch, where he teaches various courses. He has been practicing for over a decade in India and Australia. He has received his bachelor's in physiotherapy from State GS Medical College, KEM Hospital, Mumbai. And he has done his Masters of Orthopedics, Sports and Manual Therapy at the University of South Australia, where he was awarded the Mary Hammond Prize for highest achievement in the Masters program by the Australian Physiotherapy Association and the University of South Australia. He is also certified in Pilates, Western Acupuncture, and Dry Lines from Australia. He has worked with national and international level athletes of India and Australia. He is also on the panel of Olympic Gold West and provides treatment to some of India's finest athletes. He is the member of the Indian Association of Physiotherapists and is registered to practice in India and Australia. He is Asia's first official instructor for Neuro Orthopedic Institute to take courses on neural mobilization. He has assisted Michelle Coditors on mobilization of the nervous system held in Mumbai in June 2010. He was the assistant Neuro Orthopedic Institute instructor at Dublin Masterclass in April 2010. He has also assisted on sports taping courses organized by Australian Physiotherapy Association in Australia. He has presented on golf mechanics and injury prevention, exercise science laboratory and rehabilitation center of Mumbai. Hello friends, uh, welcome to this wonderful program. Uh, this is going to be a very, very interesting program for all of us. Uh, we are having an eminent guest, uh, Dr. Prakash, with us. Uh, sir, most welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And sir, without any further uh, delay, I would like you to start the program, please. Sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Neeraj. Pleasure. So, topic for today is... Yeah. Topic for today is understanding the protectometer for chronic pain assessment. Now, this is a new concept that we will be introducing. In terms of chronic pain assessment, we do not have many tools. We have been assessing the subjective, objective, joints, muscles, special tests. And in terms of pain, the only thing we do so far is look for the pain score on the VAS scale. Today, we are going to work on changing the way you look at pain and help you figure out a new way of assessing pain. So what we are targeting today is covering a few target concepts, which will help you think about pain very differently. Some of them are pretty easy. You probably must have experienced that and felt that and know that. And some of them are a bit challenging to take on. The first target concept is pain is normal, personal, and always real. This is the line that changed my life. Pain is normal. We are no one to decide whether a patient has pain or does not have pain. I'm talking more about the patients where we think pain is either in their head or it's psychological, it's not in the body, or they are lying about it. One thing is for sure, if they are complaining of pain, it's real. And only when we accept that their pain is real, we will want to do something about it. This is what changed my life. Learning about pain can help you and your community. Now, the biggest fear of pain is, why do I have the pain? Once you can understand pain, you are able to manage pain better. And once you can understand pain, you can explain pain and help people manage pain. So understanding pain becomes very important. I'm talking here more about the explain pain concept that has been going on for a few years now. So studies have shown that a conceptual change is possible with explain pain education. As you can see in this graph, the first four weeks of explain pain education session for over a thousand patients, the knowledge of pain increased 
and if the pain biology knowledge has peaked at the end of four weeks because it's a four week program you also see that the pain intensity and the catastrophizing is more or less the same or maybe even more probably because they are feeling threatened by this new dimension of pain or their beliefs being challenged with respect to pain the function did improve a bit because they now understand pain better but as you see the graph moving to the 6 month mark and now even at the 12 month mark so one year follow up post explain pain education has shown a huge difference of course the pain biology knowledge stays more or less the same because we have done our maximum explanation in the first four weeks but if you see the most relevant part that is their function increases exponentially that doesn't mean that the pain is necessarily gone but they are doing a lot better functioning a lot more irrespective of pain the pain intensity has shown a significant reduction and so is their tendency to catastrophize and think of the worst this is the power of education four weeks of education conveyed well and taken well can lead to a great result in terms of a huge amount of positive increase in function reduction in catastrophization and of course pain intensity levels now we all know that pain and tissue damage very related we have seen sometimes paper cuts can hurt a lot more and people have been bitten by sharks or even probably lost their foot while surfing only realize once they are out on the shore we all have had experiences in our life and patients describing the same that there were times when they thought it was a really bad injury and it should have hurt a lot they survived well and at times a trivial trauma a trivial movement leads to a huge amount of pain so pain is definitely not the only factor which is the result of an injury there are other factors that will decide how much pain we should get and we would like to explore those factors a little more so coming back to why do we feel pain now we talk about pain fibers pain receptors a delta c in physiology textbook they are also known as nociceptors now one thing i would like to mention over here is that nociception does not equal to pain just because nociceptors are activated it does not imply that you should have pain and also more number of nociceptors does not mean you should have more pain so to simplify things we will rename them as danger sensors because the fact is how will you explain a situation where there was supposed to be more pain but actually the pain was much less than another situation where a trivial trauma led to more pain as i mentioned earlier it is probably a survival factor survival is important when you are in danger so if your brain thinks that you are in danger it will give you more pain if your brain thinks you are in safe safety then you will get less pain so if survival is in danger pain is not important but if survival is not in danger pain can be quite extensive so let's change the way we look at nociception and pain let's talk about danger senses all this free nerve endings all this sensation that is carried on to the brain can be simply termed as danger signals if we have enough danger signals going up to the brain your brain may decide to give you pain just hold on to the thought as we talk about more concepts and come back to this the other thing about pain is that we have been thinking of pain as a simple linear process being a sensory motor phenomenon we assume that when we are pricked by a pin a sensory fiber will take the impulse up to the brain you will feel the pain because of the thalamus a motor center will react and we will move our finger away but the fact is we see the pin pricking us we hear ourselves screaming ouch we react we emote we feel bad because it's hurting so at one point of time a simple experience like a pin prick involves multiple centers which is how pain is generated in a body it is a multimodal process it involves more than one center and each pain experience has its own specific signature in the brain we call it the neurosignature this can help us understand the concept of phantom limb pain now imagine someone having pain in the leg which is not present how do you explain that now let's go back to the history this guy could probably be crossing the road during a busy traffic hour and some music going on in the background because there's a procession 
trying to visit the hospital to meet a friend and does not realize that he's walking ahead and a truck comes by suddenly barely hears the truck honking and he's unconscious after that only to get up and realize he has lost the leg now how do you explain this man getting pain in the leg that he has lost now think of all the things that happened before the injury walking towards the hospital the sight of the hospital probably the board the sound of the procession that music the honking of the truck all these have formed part of the experience where he lost his leg now all he needs to do is either think of that time he can get pain if he gets a dream about that time he can get pain if he talks about it he can get pain if he lives the experience again either verbally or emotionally he can get pain if he visits the same area crosses the same path he can get pain any center which is part of the pain neuro signature can now ignite the whole pain experience and yes do not forget that even though he has lost the leg physically the leg is still present in the motor homunculus so there is a representation of the leg in the brain which is part of the pain experience and any component visual auditory memory any one is enough to ignite the whole neuro signature it's like how you switch on one bulb and the all all the lights come on and he can go through the entire pain experience again just like he did when he first had the accident now let me give you another simple example of how you can play around with the neuro signature now we develop a neuro signature or a complex network for each and every experience in our life now you heard of the common saying doodh ka jala chhas phook phook ke peeta hai so when you are sipping on a hot white liquid for the first time and you end up burning your tongue you have a neuro signature that you had a glass filled with hot liquid which you sipped and your tongue burned the next time you are going to have a glass of milk in hand the sight of that white liquid will ignite this neuro signature and you will start feeling a bit uncomfortable it's as if you are reliving that whole experience again the good thing is we can turn the neuro signature off and that can help with pain so interestingly we will blow on this hot liquid switch off the node which says hot and make it cold and the neuro signature turns on now this is just an example to show you how the plane is a very complex experience generated by the brain it does sound very easy when i say we just need to switch on one node in the neuro signature and there will be pain relief in reality when you have a patient in front of you and they have so many components to their pain trying to get the one node to switch off can be a challenge it is definitely easy a lot of the times maybe this is what we are doing every time we do ultrasound or manual therapy we try and telling the patient this ultrasound it's going to reduce your inflammation and start the healing process and your ligament will heal and maybe we are switching off the node from an injured ligament to a healing ligament and that helps them recover with the ankle pain and it does work for a lot of our patients we are able to turn off the neuro signatures but we do get confused what we have missed out on when the patients don't respond to our treatment this is where they are the ones who have headed towards central sensitization or more of the involvement of these extra <coughs> peripheral processes in pain the new pain formula should now be different from just acknowledging the peripheral input of nociception and taking into consideration everything around the pain experience so the new definition would be pain exists when there is credible evidence of danger and pain does not exist when there is credible evidence of safety this balance can keep tipping on either side if the danger value of the surroundings of your body increases there will be more pain and if there is more safety value then you will feel less pain this is what the protectometer is about at a simple level it is about helping a patient recognize what are the threats what are the factors within and outside the body and the environment which increase the danger or the threat value leading to a more painful experience and in terms of treatment what are the factors within and outside the body in the environment which can add to the safety part make them feel better and reduce their pain levels we also need to know that pain is one of the many protective outputs 
now we can simply think of the body reacting in terms of the two systems called the sympathetic and parasympathetic we have a fight or flight response or a rest and digest response when we are stressed or when we are in pain we are working on the basis of a flight or fight response and there are certain systems that kick in which help us survive and at that time pain is not important if you're running in the jungle saving yourself from a lion no matter how badly you get hurt pricked bruised you're going to run so pain is not important at the same time when you go in the rest and digest mode your body has the time to heal and take care of itself then pain becomes important and more noticeable now imagine if you are in the fight and flight mode 24/7 this is what happens to a lot of people when they are suffering pain continuously for an extended period of time you can call them people suffering from chronic pain or those who are centrally sensitized they see the same pain is just one of the manifestations and if you observe carefully if you ask correctly you will see more than just the pain being part of the presentation so they have altered body perception and if you check the motor homunculus through a functional mri study the homunculus will also be altered they lose left right perception they start hating or probably want to disown the body part they do talk very badly about the part and they wish it was not there they wish someone could replace it or take it away so that the pain goes away you see the immune system is affected they will fall ill more often they will often miss appointment because they are not well and the flu may not be seasonal or the time when everybody falls ill they just seem to be having lower immunity and falling in more often than others tired all the time having vague aches and pains the respiratory system you will see that these people are shallow breathers the voice changes they get light headed very easily language is a very very classical sign of pain sufferers they have a lot of swearing because they are frustrated they are upset nobody is understanding their pain they are not able to get rid of their pain or some people just go into silence and they don't talk about it you will see them repeating themselves and you will see them struggling to express their pain their thoughts are all haywire they are always anxious they are worried they are negative they don't know what's happening and they feel only bad things can happen and it can only get worse they don't see any hope simply because they are not able to understand why they are suffering so much their sympathetic nervous system is in overdrive there'll be sweating changes blood flow changes weight loss anxiety difficulty sleeping which is a very big problem with people in pain they are restless all the time they could show changes in parameters like blood pressure and you could see changes in the skin often panic attacks are there you may not have anyone showing all of these things but if you pick up a few of these signs you need to start thinking that their pain is influencing more than just their motor function and of course the motor system is one we are mainly concerned with as physical therapist tight muscles aches and pains rigid movements groaning difficulty learning new movements and we probably think it is because of lack of muscle balance lack of motor control it could actually be a lack of proper coordination between the mind and the body if a motor homunculus is smashed if the presentation of the brain uh, the body in the brain is altered that part will not function optimally you will see signs of the endocrine system being involved they often have poor digestion and a lot of time digestion is just related to poor dietary habits in fact a lot of people accept having a bad digestive system is a lifestyle issue today because everyone has it our food is wrong our timings are wrong our habits are wrong our patterns are wrong but interestingly these two are related to pain as well your digestion can be influenced by pain and vice versa there is increased fat loss constipation simply signs of the digestive system not working optimally in short you will see that these patients are in survival mode having a fight or flight response all the time and when you are always struggling for survival you do not have time for healing you do not have time for recovery you do not have time for rest and if all these things can't happen how will you ever get pain free we are bioplastic 
from the time we are born to the time we age we are constantly adapting now we often call aging changes as degenerative changes and we look at those in terms of negative things happening in our body and often we are scared of aging we don't want to grow old because we assume as we grow old we will become weak fragile have falls fractures heart attacks respiratory issues we think of aging as a process which is slowly killing us but the fact is we are adapting constantly all the changes that you ever see in your mri x rays any scans they are signs that your body is working very hard to adapt to the loads the stresses that you are putting it through and it is doing a beautiful job if it did not adapt you would be having more problem than you have now so all these parts all these changes happening in our body from birth till the end of our life are natural changes which we go through simply are a proof of our body adapting to the stress and helping us survive optimally with the given stresses let's take for example a car you buy it's not going to stay spick and span and new and scratch free 5 years from the first day you bought it it will go through a regular wear but despite that your car functions optimally just because the car wears out does not guarantee that it will give you problems yes if you do not take care while driving you do not maintain your car you do not do the right things you do not service it don't take care of the engine speed too much put a lot of pressure on the car to perform push it through its limits it will start breaking down so it is how you handle your car it's not about what the car goes through naturally just by the passage of time same with the body we are bioplastic we keep changing we heal a body can come back from everything but we have to give a body the opportunity to adapt to repair to stay healthy there are multiple active treatment strategies one thing that has worked best for acute to chronic pain management is active therapy we have known from our experience the more rest it's going to be helping you for a certain amount of time beyond which it starts getting detrimental it's not going to help your body heal it's not going to help you get better it could in fact make you weaker and more dependent on support and lead to more problems rather than benefits active treatment works the best movement is like magic motion is lotion our joints love movement it nourishes them our muscles stay optimally aligned lengthened if we move well if we move optimally and of course our brain loves movement movement is medicine and one thing that helps people cope with pain is active management after the explain pain education this is the only management or the best management that we have to offer current pain strategies that we are working on are not helping all our patients despite the most advanced therapy treatments surgeries being offered we still have patients suffering one in four people have ongoing pain that's a lot 25% of the world world is suffering what is not working so the goals are shifting from treatment from management to treatment there was a time we used to tell people that you have learned to manage your pain but now we can surely say that your pain is treatable and it is possible to be pain free persistent pain is best treated in the community level education about pain is not only important for therapists but for patients as well the more people are educated about how to manage their pain the lesser chances of there being a pandemic spread of pain today if you see the pain has almost spread at a pandemic level and is a big cost to everyone in developed countries the cost is to the government they are spending huge funds for pain treatments and in developing countries like ours where we pay from out of pocket for all medical treatments it's a big cost to our pocket all these costs can be reduced if we can talk about pain 
at the community level help people understand pain manage pain and thus treat pain so let's explore our pain experience coming back to the dangers and safeties at a simple level if we divide all the factors in a patient's presentation into evidence of danger and evidence of safety the balance between the two can help us decide how much pain is there if that coincides with the pain they are talking about we know that we have got all the factors sometimes we may be finding some missing bits because the pain reported is quite high and we don't see many danger signs or negative signs in their presentation that is where we need to dig in further so we need to understand what are these factors now let's give you some examples what is a credible ev credible evidence of danger now of course when there are physical signs like swelling spasm lack of movement antalgic gait this is what we are usually looking for there is a nice credible evidence of danger and we assume yes this could have pain but besides that we know that pain is more than just a sensory motor phenomenon there could be a psychological and a social component to pain so what are the examples hearing that nothing is wrong with you so your pain is probably not real if a physician a doctor a therapist does not believe in a patient's pain this patient is not going to get better faster remember we first started with the topic that pain is real if we cannot acknowledge someone's pain is real we can never get that patient better it's not their fault that we can't understand their pain it is the onus is on us to learn read understand pain better so we can understand explain and help them take care of this pain going to the same place where you first injured your body is a negative factor now the patient must have recovered completely physically but having a bad memory a bad feeling about the place just like we spoke about the phantom limb presentation could actually introduce some anxiety lead to some release of stress chemicals and can cause pain believing you might end up in a wheelchair a lot of times these consequences are put forth if they do not follow our advice so oh, you have a disc bulge if you don't take care of it now your wheelchair is next that's your future having such strong consequences such strong information given from therapists doctors friends others can be a very very big danger factor you may treat their problem they might feel better they may perform the best of exercises but still having this fear can actually maintain their pain receiving a diagnosis that sounds bad without really knowing what it means often patients are unaware of what they are suffering from because they cannot interpret or understand a diagnosis that's where our education helps if we can understand and help them understand they will be on us with us in terms of their recovery process and you'll be surprised how fast they recover when you give them responsibility after understanding you will see that they put in more than their two bits and they recover faster because they feel more in control so education helps them gain control of the situation and helps them take care of their pain and you'll see a faster recovery a better response with such patients now reading that interest rates are going up again looking at this current situation of the covid pandemic people are struggling not having work probably debts to pay the next date where they have to pay the next loan installment somebody already in pain will be so anxious and worried they might have the pain shooting up this alone could be responsible for the pain score going higher on the bas scale on the other hand we have credible credible evidence of safety how do we make a patient feel better you know it's like we say count your blessing or gratitude is the best attitude we often talk about stresses of life where you are feeling down you're feeling low you're feeling miserable and you're looking at what is not going well and what all is going wrong one way of getting out of that is by feeling grateful for what you have looking at the positives and the same can be done as far as pain is concerned what is your credible evidence of safety so being aware of a proven path to recovery knowing that explain pain education is evidence based and has helped cover patients can be a powerful tool that you are getting treatment which has been proved to work effectively 
making an appointment to see a health professional. Now we often go to doctors from a reference and we'd like to go to someone who has helped our friend, our relative, our neighbor, many people. And we know that we are going to see someone who knows what he's doing. That is very reassuring. And we hope that this guy is going to make us better because we have seen his, his treatment works, his suggestion works. Knowing that you are not the only person. This is the most frustrating part of any time that you are down, not just an injury. Why me? Well, make a beginning by knowing it's not just you. Shit happens and it happens to everyone. May not be happening now, but it happens to everyone at some point in life and they have to cope with it. They have to get out of it, move on and live. You may do that with help. You may do that on your own, but you can't stop it from happening. So accept it first. The more you are in denial, the longer you will have the evidence of danger, more you will be in pain. So the earlier you accept it, the uh, more you would want to know, do something about it. Having a block tends to work like magic. Sometimes patients get convinced that this block will block pain signals going to the brain. And yes, for the time it works, it is amazing. So it could be a nice evidence of safety that I've got a block and now no more pain signals going to my brain. And loving support from family, support from office, from boss, from your environment, from neighbors can make a huge difference to your recovery. If someone not believing in you that you could have pain can make your pain worse. People coming through for you and helping you recover can make an amazing difference to your pain levels and help you get rid of pain very easily. So here are some examples of danger and safety where you will notice that some of them are a bit tricky, could go on the either side. So your doctor reassures that you are not alone. There is hope. It's a nice thing to know. We feel positive. Interest rates go up, bad thing, negative. You've gone over your ankle, it's swelling up fast. Now this is a very, very scary notion. Oh, my ankle is swelling. But can we make it a positive notion? All we have to tell them, oh, it's swelling. Your body has started healing. It's a natural response. Good, you'll be fine soon. And this can be converted from a danger signal to a safe signal. Your partner says yes to joining yoga class. Now this could mean different for different people. For some, they would be really excited to have their partner's company. And for some, it is a danger signal. Why is my partner coming? You don't see your friends anymore. If you don't have friends, you don't have social company, you don't have a laugh, you don't have oxytocin release, you're not going to feel good. It's definitely a danger signal. You think you are coming down with something? Yes, a danger signal. Your flu, you feeling down, is a sign of low immune system. And if your immune system is struggling, there will be immune chemicals released, which will add to the danger signals and cause pain. Your boss is committed to working through your issue with you. Now, in an ideal situation, could be looked at a safety thing. Your boss is concerned that you perform better, willing to sit through you, help you perform better, rather than firing you or yelling at you or taking that work away from you. On the other hand, it could also mean I have done something seriously wrong that my boss needs to talk to me. Your sporting hero is back playing better than ever. Of course, it's a very, very good safety signal, isn't it? If he can do it, I can. If he can beat all odds, I can. If he can perform to that level despite the injury, why not me? Your doctor is worried your pain suggests about your pain and suggests seeing a surgeon. That could mean two things. One, oh yes, finally, there is some solution. And that's why I'm being referred. Or second, is my situation so bad? Do I need to see a specialist and it can't be handled by a pain by my GP? So it all depends on your situation, your perception of your situation. You realize your family are supportive and committed to your well-being. That's a big safety signal. Now with all these examples, one thing I'm trying to prove over here is none of them are talking about your physical assessment, your range of motion, your strength, your joint mobility, nothing. It's about all the other factors in your life that can help you feel safe or in danger. And these factors can influence your pain levels. 
So when we are looking at pain, especially at the chronic pain level, we need to look at the presentation beyond just the body. So let's talk about the dim and varieties. Of course, not the eating kinds. Dim or danger in me or sim and safety in me. Where can you find clues? How do we know? How do we figure them out? Sims and sims are hiding in seven categories. Things you hear, see, smell, taste, touch, all your senses. Things you do, things you say, things you think and believe, places you go, people in your life, things happening in your body. Now, why are these important? Now, we know when pain is beyond just the physical assessment that we have done, we need to figure out which part of the patient's life or the pain experience is the one that is pulling them down. What, mean, what we can do with this exercise, if we may not be able to tell them what to do about their life, but we can definitely let them have an insight. There may be some social, some emotional factors. In terms of the social and emotional factors, we as a physical therapists can educate them to an extent, but beyond that, it is in the hands of other professionals to carry further. But yes, if we can definitely get this insight to patients and help them realize there are factors more than the injury, more than their body contributing to the pain experience, we empower them to now be in the know-how of what is influencing the pain and what next has to be decided by them. Whether they seek professional help or no is their choice. But you as a physical therapist have done your job in helping them pick up factors which could be influenced their presentation. Now looking at things that you hear, hear see, taste, touch, etc. Looking at your x-ray, degenerative changes or wear and tear or irregular edges on your knee x-ray could, could come across as a danger signal that my knee is worn out, isn't it? Hearing that my scan is clear is a positive news. Things that we touch, Massage. In this field, we have the power to touch patients and it works beautifully. It works wonderful for all patients who are lacking that feeling of security and touch has a great power to make someone feel safe, secure, done the right way, of course. You need to pick up that what of these factors are pulling the patient down and how we can turn them around to make them feel better. For example, a patient's MRI finding. MRIs are very commonly taken to scare people. Oh, it's your disc that is bulging. You're in trouble. What if we turn around that same finding and say, oh, that's a regular process. At, at this age, with the kind of work you've done, this is how your body has adapted. So what if you have this? If I take my MRI, even with no pain, I'm sure I'll have some of these findings. These things that patient hear, see, what the doctors say, what the therapists say, what the reports say can be a big danger factor if not explained well. But you as therapists have the power to change this notion to a positive finding and help them feel secure that it is expected to see this on your scan. Nothing is out of the ordinary. Of course, we cannot ignore findings which are red flag or which need attention of some specialist. But most of the time when we know that these findings are not exactly why they are suffering, we can reduce the threat value and convert a danger in me to a safety in me. And you will realize that such patients, they start feeling better the minute you start talking to them. And they'll tell you, you know, I'm already feeling better now that you've explained what's happening. I was so worried about my MRI findings. Things you do. Our patients want passive treatment. They think a pill will do the job. The therapist will put some needles, he will push some joints, or I'll just stay home and not do anything. These are big danger signals. You cannot get better when you don't take responsibility of your problem. Once you start taking responsibility, you will want to do something about it. And that's where you can encourage such patients to move, to exercise, to take on the concept of understanding pain. So it all depends on the patient's willingness to learn. If they are open, they are willing to actively manage their pain and take responsibility. You can convert a lot of the dims into sins. But if they are passive copers, they'll have a huge number of dims and that will keep maintaining their pain state because there is no magic pill 
magic bullet, magic surgery, or magic treatment for pain. They need to do something about it. Things you say, it's just age. We all think that as we age, we should degenerate, have arthritis, a heart attack, respiratory issues, some osteoporotic fractures, and die. What a way to look at age, no? It doesn't want, it does makes me feel that I should not live beyond 60. We need to change this concept of age. Age is a number. It tells you how many years you've been on this place, but that does not decide how you feel today. You could be very old in your 30s and very young in your 60s. It all depends on how you deal with your body and how much you take care of it. A diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Very commonly, when doctors, physicians, therapists also, when people don't understand why the pain is persisting, tissue has crossed the healing time. This patient should be pain free now. This is the next word given to them. But doctor, what do I have? You have fibromyalgia. And that's the end of their life. They have been given a guarantee of lifetime pain and suffering with this diagnosis. Now, the fact is, there is no such diagnosis called fibromyalgia. These are patients who are having chronic pain. That's all. And they have more than the body part involved, which got injured once upon a time. They have the central nervous system behaving funny. They have affective, emotional, cognitive involvement of their pain. They have their immune system, gastro system, output systems involved. And that's why they are seeing, showing so many signs and symptoms. Just that we don't understand. And that's why we label them fibromyalgia. Well, if you do say they have fibromyalgia, then what is the treatment? Which is where there is no answer. And that's why fibromyalgia is a big, big thing. Well, yes, convert it to a sim. One, there is no such thing as fibromyalgia. It's chronic pain. Two, there is enough evidence. We understand this pain now and we can help you. You can make a difference to the worst of the patients with the power of education. Things you think and you believe. Pain is forever. Some people think, you know, I don't think I will ever get rid of this pain. It was too bad an injury. I am too damaged now. It's been too many years now. Some people accept it as part of life. They think they will never get better. Nobody never figured out what went wrong. But do you think they are still injured so many years later? This is where you need to get into change things for them. Well, if bones can heal, why not any other structure? What have you injured? Is it your muscle, your tendon, your nerve? Well, when fractures can heal and they take the longest, any other structures heal better. That is not the reason why you are in pain. If you can understand pain and explain pain, they will be more willing to listen to you because you can talk about can concepts they have not heard before. So having this new concept of pain, the explain pain education, is a powerful tool because it helps you understand patient's pain. It helps you explain their pain. And when you talk different to what they have heard so far and you give them hope that this pain can go, you have started making the shift from a dim to a sim. Places you go, the hospital or the clinic or the surgeon's office could be a very, very negative place. It could be one of the biggest dim. Simply because every time the patient goes there, they get a negative feedback. Oh, you're injured, you're damaged, you have fibromyalgia. Nothing can be done. Just take these medications, change the medication, take more pills. You probably look at surgery. Or it could be a positive thing. They come to a place where they meet a therapist who understands pain, explains why they are suffering, and tells them how they can get out of it. You see, with the right knowledge, any and every professional can help a patient. And that same setup, which can be a dim for a lot of patients, can suddenly become a sim and help people on recovery. Places you go, going for a walk with friends, dance class with my bestie. All these things can create more positivity in someone's life. Start picking up things and going to places you like rather than going to places you don't like. Go for a movie, go for a walk. Of course, difficult in these times. But yes, places you go can make a big difference to how you feel about yourself and, in short, your pain. People in your life, uh, people in your life who can help maintain your pain could be your boss if things are not going well there, could be your family if you have some trouble in relationships, 
could be your health professional who's giving you these harsh diagnoses. Sometimes it could just be your annoying neighbor whose dog is barking endlessly. All these things can make you feel more pain because they add to the danger value. So you need to cut the crap out. You need to start looking for people who understand. Your friends who may not understand your pain, but they understand you. Look for a professional who is more up to date with their knowledge and can explain pain better. Stop going to people who are rubbishing your pain. Start listening to people who are accepting that you have pain. Things happening in your body. Now you often tend to interpret things happening in a body, say like a pop, sometimes a crack. Cracking is normal. When you move and a stiff joint opens up, you often hear a crack. But sometimes people think that's damaging. Each time my joint cracks, it's, it's damaging the joint. And eventually my joint will wear out. Well, it's normal. It's natural. Okay. Inflammation is a very scary thing happening in the body. Oh, look at my part swollen, all red, puffed up, even warm. But you can convert the same inflammation to a very powerful sin. Oh, this is your body's healing process. Your body has already started working. You're going to get better now. It's happening. So, in short, what we have discussed in this dim sim balance so far, we have spoken less of the physical assessment that we do, but more of the factors around the whole pain experience. Factors about the things you hear, see, smell, taste, touch, what you do, you say, you think, places you go, people in your life, and things happening in your body. Each and every bit of this can influence your pain levels. So as part of the protectometer assessment, what we need to do is help patients figure these out. It would be nice to have them make chits and write down these things on two sides. One on the negative side, things that bother them, stress them, and cause more pain. And on the positive side, things that make them feel good. Now, in a simple way, the therapy would be reducing the dims and increasing the sims. Now, how do we knock out the sims? Oh, sorry, the dims. A lot of them can be done by education and understanding pain. And some of them could be done by just avoiding unpleasant experiences. And to do that, we need to encourage more of the pleasant experiences. So we need to shift the focus towards sims. But remember, sometimes the dims could be in really, really hard to find places. Patients may not come up with these answers straight away in the first session, maybe not in the second session, until they keep thinking of these things, keep practicing thinking about the things that bother them. And they might just suddenly come up and say, you know, it's my relationship with my father that's bothering me. And that could be a really, really big sim where you will realize most of the sims have been knocked off, but this patient is still not significantly better. What's bothering them? So sometimes there could be one big, powerful dim, which can reduce the value of a lot of small, small sims. It's an ongoing process. It's dynamic. Some days your pain is better because there are more sims. Some days the pain is worse because there are more dims. And the dim could just be that the weather is not good. It's cloudy and it's pouring. And I'm feeling a bit under the weather. You need that one little bit thing to not be in your favor and tip you towards the dim side and the pain goes up. But what you need to constantly do, as I said earlier, gratitude is the best attitude. Look for sins. Look for positives. And believe me, it's very hard to begin with. But the more you look for them, the more easily you start finding them. And you'll realize that you are far ahead on the sin side and very few dims left to tackle. And you can you feel more in control of your pain. So there could be never one cause of your pain going up and down. Sometimes there could be a couple of them or three of them together. There are lots of phases to start with. Pick up any one. Start working on it. Active management always beats passive. Because you know now that the pain is beyond the part that you are touching passively. And implicitly teach emergence. We need to bring this concept across to patients that pain is a phenomenon. It's an experience. It's not a sensation. And because it's an experience, it involves all these factors in their life. And to treat pain, they don't just have to get rid of the sensation of pain. They need to make sure they can knock off the dims, encourage the sims, and take care of these various aspects of the pain phenomenon.
So this is a simple representation of the protectometer indicator. Please log on to noijam.com if you want to have more information on this or download the protectometer chart. So when we tell people to write down the dims and sims, we tell them to do it on a particular date and mark their pain score on that day. So considering your pain being 2 on 10 today, these are your dims and these are sims. Let's get back to them one week later. What is your pain score today? What is the dim sim balance? Is your pain higher because there are more sims? Is your pain lesser because there are more? Sorry, the other way. Is your pain higher because there are more dims? Is your pain lesser because there are more sims? Or is your pain high despite more sims? Have we missed out on some very relevant dim which is very powerful? All this helps you reflect what you are doing is working towards recovery or not. It will be good to have patients fill these charts at intervals. It may not be every day, it could be weekly, it could be once in 15 days, but it is a very good thing to come back and reflect on what things were bothering them, what they have done about it, and how much more positivity they have filled in their life, how many more sims they have. It's a matter of time, they fill themselves up with sims, and life becomes better, pain becomes less. So, have I got a headache? You know, sometimes you're tipping on the verge of a headache. And you know it's coming and then suddenly you feel your stomach cramping and you feel oh no my acidity has got my headache but it's not the acidity you were almost getting it what was it was it the recent few nights you've not slept well the extended hours on the computer you being stressed and tensing your upper body because of the recent situation you are a lot of factors could have brought you to the brink of getting that headache and one more negative signal, ooh, acidity, and there the pain shoots up. So we are looking for the straw that breaks the camel's back. And we often blame that straw. You know that one bend? I bent over to pick up the pen and my disc popped out. You think the disc is that fragile? How many years of your life you have bent and the disc never popped out? If the disc is so fragile, it can pop out with a bend to lift up a pen. You should probably never bend for the rest of your life. It should be banned. People should not be allowed to bend. So let's not focus on the last bit where it all started. Let's focus on why did we reach there in the first place. The last thing that gave me a hangover. Well, it wouldn't have happened if you had not had the previous few drinks. The Bilby in the bathtub. This is a very nice Australian story. When I read this story for my daughter, the story was slightly different. They called it the bee in the bathtub. So the way the story goes is that this man is having a lovely bath in the bathtub and then the hippo, the biggest animal comes and says, can I join in? And he says, jump in. Then comes the lion. Can I join in? Jump in. The crocodile joins, the snake joins, the giraffe joins, a lot of animals keep entering. And finally, a tiny little bee in our story and Bill Bee in the Australian story says, can I join in? And the minute this small animal jumps into the, the water spills. And everybody blames this tiny animal for the water spilling. But what about the animals that are already present there? If they had not been there, would the water spill by such a tiny one? Absolutely not. This is what we have to do in terms of a patient's pain presentation. Not focus on the tiny event which led to the beginning of pain, but focus on all the events that made them vulnerable, brought them to the brink, pushed them beyond the threshold that now they have pain. If we are able to figure out all this in the patient story, we can definitely help them get better and stay better. So when we are looking at treatment, put it simplistically, remove DIMS, find and power up sins, turn DIMS into sins. Easy said than done, but yes, possible, put it into practice and see this. So just a few categories, how we can encourage sims. I'll be a little brief with those. So send people sim hunting. Take them, ask them to take pictures of pleasant things, pleasant sights, things they like. Go to the movies, a nice movie, not a depressing one. Spice up your life, do something different, do something you've not done before. Be aware of what you hear. Be careful of what you watch on YouTube. Be careful of what you try to know about pain. There is good and bad stuff out there in the world. Make sure you choose well. Relax, take it easy, cut yourself some slack. 
वो वर्चुअल ओके मिरर थेरेपी एंड वर्चुअल रिहा दे आर द नेक्स्ट इन द रिहा virtually when you are moving you are not actually moving the body part physically but yes you are exercising all the neurons that take part in movement no harm imagining movement does the same you are firing up the neurons without moving the part imagine movements see mirror image of the normal part or do virtual rehab can work amazingly well for recovery be a kid have fun graded exposure this we can cover more on the other courses but yes in simple words baby steps one step at a time a hard day is night stop being negative stop saying i am stuck stop saying i will never get better repel the invader words that can keep the brain cells on alert cut the crap out as i said stay away from negative words negative people negative videos negative views all together now okay never think that your body is falling apart and this part is useless it's you in the end as a whole and it is all good it'll get better things that you believe check your sources google is not always the best source make sure the person who's giving you info has enough info and good credibility to give you the info reframe pain now we often think of pain as an unpleasant thing but what if we tell you pain is actually good it protects you without pain you would never bother continue with your daily life and probably cause more harm and more damage think of it differently pain is a protector know your strategy being actively involved in your management and being active physically are both better than passive coping pain will never go on its own if you do nothing about it pain is a defender as i mentioned it's a protector denial the earlier you accept the earlier you'll want to do something if you keep denying you're never going to get there start with the person in the mirror accept yourself it's all you and it's all good you there's nothing wrong all these scars and bits change bits are part of you and it's your body's way to adapt to keep you going nothing's wrong it's not not normal come together connect meet people be with the right kind of people lessen the chance of getting flu exercise take care of your immune system be healthy imagine all people visualize outcomes visualization is a very powerful tool a lot of athletes for performance tend to visualize what they are going to do it's as if you're running the neural circuitry to actually doing it and you realize if you run it enough mentally the body follows and you'll be surprised how something that was hurting suddenly becomes less painful you got a friend always keep in touch it helps you'll see when people are down they will always want to talk to someone you may be down with pain friends will always help they are there for you go back and retrace your health journey where did it go wrong which misconception brought you here try to find out more change your misconception try to get the right information step by step as i said few steps could be few reps could be few times it could be as little as possible and then as far as you've taken the first step and made the beginning it will only get better the world is your oyster go somewhere new take a different route challenge yourself try something new pick up a hobby learn something the more you challenge your brain more you will be you'll find it easier to get more sims in your life the brain needs change it is sick of the same pattern because the same pattern will drive you towards the same pain experience break your routine break your pattern the thoughts and beliefs are nerve impulses thinking about your pain can give you pain have good thoughts the food you eat now foods are often taken as a feel good factor and for that feel good factor we often end up taking more junk but remember it could be okay sometimes to give yourself a treat but eating healthy matters unhealthy food leads to more fat cells and more chronic systemic inflammation which will maintain your pain levels so switching to a healthy diet matters meet your health partners stay in touch with individuals who are up to date with pain don't consult too many people consult a few who know what they are saying get yourself checked out sometimes there may be actual red flags and they need to be taken care of sometimes there is an actual stiff joint which needs to be mobilized 
Sometimes it's an actual muscle strain which needs some rest or some bandaging or support. Make sure you get it checked if something is being missed out. In the end, your brain is the most powerful area and we have a drug cabinet in the brain. We have opioid receptors because our brain can release opioid when required. And the one tool that can help you release these good hormones or painkillers is education. Knowing pain can help you tap onto these, the drug cabinet in the brain and help you manage pain. Thank you very much for listening. This was just a brief lecture to introduce the conceptual change about pain, trying to make you think differently, understanding that there is more to a pain than just the physical experience, talking a little bit about the dim sim balance, or in short, how other factors in your life, in your patient presentation can influence pain and thus pain relief. In this given time, this is the best we could do. Of course, if you would like to know more, there is a lot of information on noigroup.com, noijam, and on a lot of the courses that are being conducted through Noi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It was very informative and uh, quite interesting. Uh, it is definitely going to be helpful to all of us. Uh, friends, if you are having any questions uh, regarding the session, you can ask in the chat group now. Uh, meanwhile, we will play a positive video uh, in this uh, COVID condition. Many of us, uh, sir, is also, sir has talked about the positive thinking and keeping our moral up, how it, it's helpful to us uh, uh, to function. Uh, so your mind, is, positivity in the mind is extremely necessary and specifically in this COVID time, it is extremely, extremely necessary. I would like to play one video meanwhile. And please friends, write your questions in the chat group and write Q in front of your questions so we can uh, take your questions one by one and write your uh, email address in the chat group uh, to prove that you are present and we can release the certificates to you. Thank you very much. Let's have a look of the video. गुजर जाएगा मुश्किल बहुत है मगर वक्त ही तो है गुजर जाएगा गुजर जाएगा जिंदा रहने का ये जो जज्बा है फिर ऊपर आएगा गुजर जाएगा गुजर जाएगा माना मौत चेहरा बदल कर आई है माना मौत चेहरा बदल कर आई है माना रात काली है भयावह है गहराई है लोग दरवाजों पे रस्तों पे रुके बैठे हैं लोग दरवाजों पे रस्तों पे रुके बैठे हैं कई घबराए हैं सहमे हैं छिपे बैठे हैं मगर यकीन रख मगर यकीन रख ये बस लम्हा है दो पल में बिखर जाएगा जिंदा रहने का ये जो जज्बा है फिर असल लाएगा मुश्किल बहुत है मगर वक्त ही तो है गुजर जाएगा गुजर जाएगा थैंक यू वेरी मच फ्रेंड्स थैंक्स फॉर ज्वाइनिंग प्लीज राइट द क्वेश्चन इन द ग्रुप Yeah, uh, friends, I would like to inform you about today's uh, tomorrow's session uh, that is uh, with Dr. Annamalai, sir, uh, that is rescheduled session. As you all know, there was some technical problem in the last session. So it is rescheduled for tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 11 to 1230. That's the session and uh, uh, kindly come again. And uh, for that session, uh, we will take questions, sir. Yes. Uh, sir Vaibhav uh, Pahade is asking a question. Can you read the question? Yes. Yeah. yeah, please. Yes. So his question is whether pain can go by 60% changing them to sim without any treatment. Now, when you say treatment, if you're talking about a passive treatment, yes, pain can 
reduce substantially even without any passive treatment. But understanding pain does not mean you just talk about it. It helps you to do the right thing for getting pain relief. Now, if you have an inflamed ankle, you definitely have pain. And if the ankle inflammation is there for good, knowing that will reduce your pain, but the pain won't go away. You still have to take care of your ankle. Let the inflammation do its job of healing. Over the first week, this inflammation should settle. You should be able to regain movement and get back on track. However, if this inflammation, despite knowing it's good for you, tends to persist beyond the regular healing time, you need to do something about it. So just knowing inflammation is good will reduce your anxiety. You will hurt less, but you will still hurt. But if it does not follow the regular process of healing, as expected, you are ex supposed to do something about it. Otherwise, your pain will not go. So explain pain can power up or converting dimzosin can enhance the effect of treatment, can get more results with treatment. But it may not be the only thing you need to do. Even if it is just movement or active management, you need to do something to get rid of pain. Does that answer the question? Yes, sir. I think so. It is answered well. Sir, uh, sir Ruturaj is asking the question. Sir. Yes. Well, that's that's something we are not sure, but we have known phantom limb pain because of people losing their leg. And it is a very common phenomenon. And that's why there is so much research in trying to understand why they still have this pain. It used to be thought of as a neuroma being present. And now we know it is not a neuroma. It is actually the whole neurosignature process which is responsible for them feeling the pain. So yes, I would assume most of the people or all of the people do suffer phantom limb pain at some point, definitely after losing the limb. So Mr. Santanu Malik from Bangladesh, uh, he knows you very well for years together. He is uh, telling you hi and he has uh, sent many messages. He wants your uh, contact details as well, sir. Sure. So just a minute, there are many messages in between, that's why. Yes. yes. Sir Ashish Mathur's question. Yes. More information in the context in terms of toothache and trigeminal neuralgia. In, in what way you want more information? If you look at it, in terms of toothache, it is the same phenomenon where it is an inflammatory process or an infective process giving rise to pain. Yes, sir. I think uh, he wants to that. Is more of a neurogenic variety. Now, going into the details of trigeminal neuralgia would require to explain peripheral neurogenic pain and its management, which I think is uh, not in the not part of the topic that we have decided for today's webinar. So he could email me. And I could send more information for him to understand neurogenic pain better because that will become a very long question to answer. Sir, if you can uh, give some idea so other listeners may also get some uh, some clues about it. So. Well, see, I wouldn't want to relate to take and trigeminal neuralgia together. Just because of the jaw, the tooth being close to the trigeminal nerve, it could actually make the trigeminal nerve very sensitive and it can start firing. Now, to put it simply, your nerves are like uh, electrical cables, the wire that brings electricity to your bulb or fan. And they have a coating called myelin. So when this myelin wears off, or the electrical wires coating chips off, we get short circuiting. So if there are reasons like the tooth being inflamed, infected, jaw muscles being spasmed, the jaw being stiff, various physical factors can lead to irritation of the nerve and it can lose its myelin sheath. And when this myelin sheath is lost, the nerve tends to have excessive ion channels placed in that place. So normally ion channels are placed in the nodes of Ranvier, which helps impulses to go from one end to the other. But if you have excessive ion channels placed in a place where myelin sheath is lost, it becomes like an impulse generating sign. So now the nerve, which earlier was transmitting an impulse, becomes an impulse generator. So every time there is a mechanical, chemical, thermal stimulus from your tooth being swollen, muscle being in spasm, 
this abnormal impulse generating site will fire extensively and generate pain this is how we can explain neurogenic pain does it make sense yes sir sir uh, mahendiran is asking effect of modalities in pain well i believe everything has their own role if you feel some modality can help you reduce the inflammation improve the circulation restore normal oxygenation and wash out the lactic acid there is a big role they have in pain now especially in the ischemic category of pain pain from postures pain from repetitive activity where there is a lot of lactic acid accumulated modalities like heat ice massage soft tissue release can help wash out the lactic acid and help with the pain definitely inflammation i'd be a bit skeptical very few modalities can help with the drainage of the fluid i would rather let it be alone neurogenic pain definitely no scope of modalities there in fact there is a risk of aggravating pain so i would stay hands off with neurogenic pain sir bargo bargo's question sir friend having pain during writing and driving upper back region since 4 years but this is a very vague question because we need a lot more information was there an injury what is the posture what is the work what are the demands on the upper body which area what is the pattern is there morning stiffness is there night pain aggravating factors easing factors we need a lot more information to answer this question so he could actually email me and you know discuss the case in detail there is no shortcut to relieving chronic pain yes understanding pain makes a beginning if you want to feel better straight away you need to understand why you are hurting and definitely you made a good beginning but if you think there is a passive technique which can help chronic pain no the chronic pain is existing because your periphery level pain was never controlled and you never got results in the first place pain that has persisted beyond the healing time is labeled chronic pain so if nothing helped earlier why are you expecting a quick fix now but yes education is powerful it will take the threat away and you will start feeling better straight away how much better varies from person to person in terms of how well pain is explained and how well pain is understood well i sense swelling is very interesting now we say ice is there to reduce swelling but the fact is when you put ice there is a hunting sense phenomenon which leads to alternation between increase and decrease blood supply so that works more as a pump to drain the fluid out of the area i think the ice is there more for dampening the pain signals and having a stimulus overlying the painful stimulus so that you don't feel pain you feel cold and you feel numb but i'm not sure what role ice will play in reducing the inflammation per se because that is a natural process it's going to happen on its own so yes you can feel more comfortable with ice but i'm not sure how well ice helps reduce the inflammation i would say effleurage compression elevation would be more factors that can help reduce the inflammation and i would not definitely not be in a hurry to reduce the inflammation i will not expect to drain the fluid out in on day 1 to get the inflammation to go but yes i would not want it to persist beyond its normal time of the first week of healing it has to start reducing definitely after the first 48 hours if it doesn't then i would worry and do something about it thalamic pain um i guess this we can discuss later this is out of the scope of this topic so we are talking mainly the role of the brain in pain and not in terms of specific conditions here so this can be discussed by email or some other contact please physical and mental pain okay good question what is the difference between physical and mental pain are they the same or are they different is there a site for emotional pain 
is there a site for the mind is there a place where we feel emotional pain pain is pain physical emotional it is all under the same category it's just that physical pain normally has a preceding physical injury or an insult but emotional pain has an emotional injury or an insult they will still involve the same processes same centers of the brain they will have their own specific neuro signature and if you do a functional mri they will they might probably look the same in terms of the areas which will light up during the functional mri so i believe they won't be very different they'll be quite similar when you see them on a functional mri so physical pain i would say is no different to emotional pain is false bravado good interesting thing you often have these patients who think that they can bear pain and they would like to ignore it it can lead to serious consequences people often think if they'll bear it it will go away and they should have the capacity to bear more i would not agree with that every experience has to change over time if you are having pain from something you know you did something that happened it has to change over time because that is where you know your body is taking care of you and you are healing but if the pain persists either you are doing something wrong or the condition is too bad and needs attention either way, you should not keep tolerating endlessly this is a threshold as i said every tissue has a healing time beyond that time if you are trying to brave it out you are definitely encouraging yourself going into the chronic pain cycle can we use protectometer of course yes protectometer does have the pain scale in incorporated in it plus it has got a lot more aspects of pain as an experience i think it will be a better tool to use than your regular pain scale so once dr bansali has everyone's emails i can send him the protectometer handout and you can just forward it to everyone so that they can use it in their clinics sure sir we'll do so do we need to shift from biomedical to biosocial of course yes you will not get success in lot of cases if you don't change your thinking now you can only help certain patients biomedically but if you know there is a strong emotional social affective component you will never get success being in the biomedical model so yes it is the need of the r Did you switch from biomedical to biopsychosocial model? So the sites you need to visit are www. n o i group g r o u p group. dot com. They have a blog called Noi Jam n o i j a m. They are there on Facebook. They are there on Instagram. But if you visit the site, you will get extensive information and the blogs. has got a number of small blogs written about various aspects of pain and pain management with some patient examples some interesting stories well that's a tough one that is where the education is about and when i kept talking about the education we spoke of uh, the skill of the therapist in terms of understanding pain and in explaining pain on the other side the patient side is very very important well if the patient is close to what you are saying they will never get better but more often than not when a patient has come to you they have either suffered enough not got answers got confused with lot of professionals and when you start talking about things they have not heard they may not take it at face value day one but they will definitely go home and think what you said no one has said before what you said may make sense it is very confronting for someone to accept who oh, my part is healed but i'm still having pain is probably thinking i'm mad or it's in my head you have to be careful not to use those words but still get the message they do get upset i have had experience of the patient gets upset and tells me you think it's my head and they abuse and they leave but when they reflect they think yes what he said did make sense if they want to be better they will come back if they want a passive fix they want to find the magic healer god help them
well as i said if they are coming back explain pain education can do the need for so you will need to actually read a lot more material to get that is pain measurable yes very much whether it is your vas scale or the protectometer we are measuring pain numerically because we want to quantify pain to know whether the pain is better or worse compared to the last time we were checking so yes we need to quantify pain accurately now there is no way of a therapist knowing how much pain a patient is suffering because it's a very subjective feeling that is what the patient feels at that point of it's their estimate of how they understand pain so there is no way of knowing this is precisely accurate i can't tell you if i hit you with a 2 kg hammer your pain should be 5 on 10 but if i hit you with a 10 kg hammer you should have 8 on 10 pain we cannot be that precise so the best guess of the patient in terms of their understanding of the scale is what we have to trust and if you feel they are putting their pain much more or much less probably work around understanding from them why they are feeling so differently what is what is it about the scale that they do not understand well these are the patients who definitely have been taking treatment endlessly if they feel only modalities can help them you will be really lucky some people actually do respond i had a patient who came to me and said 10 at 15 kg load intermittent in will be okay and believe me he was okay there are some times when people are so sure it will help them it's actually working more on the brain the neurosignature than the body but yes if they feel modalities can only help and they have a history of innumerable treatment sessions you can ask them your treatment session history is just refuting what you said definitely you can make some meaning if you know their history but if it is the first time you have to trust them and give them a fair chance maybe do it for a couple of times and tell them in these sessions this is what i expect but you don't seem to be responding how i assumed looks like we can try something else which can help you better so this thalamic pain question is coming again and again from various uh, viewers yes yeah honestly thalamic pain can be there only when there is a frank injury to the thalamus isn't it thalamic being the site of pain or the main center of pain that pain tends to be really really bad now provided the part that was injured has recovered and has got restored in normal physiology we would categorize that into any other chronic pain just like trigeminal neuralgia or any pain like fibromyalgia so it is no different in terms of management so as i said if the physical injury is done if the part has recovered your pain from the thalamus from the nerve from any other structure is the same if it has persisted beyond tissue healing time and it can be classified as chronic pain and what will work is explain pain education for them so there is no specific management for therapeutic pain they fall into the same category of chronic pain could you elaborate your question further please so actually i know her case uh, she is a therapist and she met with an accident uh, four years back and uh, uh, she is from uh, some yes. south some place and she is has developed synkinesis and she is having a concern for that so she is asking regarding that yes. uh, yeah uh, the facial pulse what, what exactly yeah yes. face, yeah post uh, uh, tra uh, trauma facial pulse is there on the left left side yes yes so what is happening what's the presentation now sir i and uh, mouth uh, synkinesis is there sir yes so often these can be put down to excessive firing or improper functioning of the nervous system and honestly at a gross level i am not able to comment much unless we have certain you know history and you know investigations whether there was actual trauma which has persisted or recovered sometimes it could be just the residual effect of what had happened earlier and because the as i said the nerve has not recovered or become healthy again there could be persistent synkinesis mm -hmm. yes sir doesn't make sense it may not be the injury persisting for so long 
but the after effect because the the nervous tissue the nervous system is still not completely healthy again so so it all depends on honestly we'll need to know the a little more about her to be able to comment on that so if you so if you can just pass out my email id then we could exchange you know communication and try to help more so you just uh, speak your email id on screen uh, they will note yes. it down many of them are asking sir yes so for all those who are having these concrete problems to discuss can possibly sit down write down a good email with all your full assessment whatever findings are there any investigation reports you have give the full lot and send an email to info i n f o at physiohealth.in p h y s i o h e a l t h dot in so once i have enough information i'll be able to comment if i need more information i will ask again okay so that way whether it is that back pain while driving or any other condition and any other patient where you want to know more about we can have a better discussion so cognitive behavioral therapy is a very 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 useful tool often that not only focuses on the pain part of the problem but as i mentioned earlier people in pain are anxious depressed they are helped in terms of all these aspects that are affecting their emotional life with cognitive behavioral therapy in fact chronic pain management is a team approach it is not just managed by a physiotherapist or a pain specialist you need a psychologist you need a social worker the longer the the more the members of the team the more help you can offer unfortunately we do not have these pain groups where everyone can sit together and give their own bit but yes if you have people on the same page who understand chronic pain cpt has got a very very important role in chronic pain management not tennis elbow depends on whether your tennis elbow is coming from the common excursor origin the radial nerve or it is a centrally sensitized patient your treatment will differ so i think these general management questions can go into any any zone so we'll better st stick to questions about the protectometer and then some categories if it's better we stay on the topic rest all as i said please feel free to email me yes there is a good role of this method in stroke patients in fact they also have a workshop where they are talking about pain in these stroke pain patients because there is frank injury to the brain and they do have pain and then managing their pain becomes a challenge as well so understanding pain and explain pain education has a very very good role in stroke pain patients yes definitely yes pain is negative or positive well pain is a protector it's positive but persisting beyond the tissue healing time when it's not required becomes negative so it's a defense which can become a defect if it overstays uh, sir uh, uh, this uh, i i would like to inform this person uh, uh, please uh, you can whatsapp me uh, for tomorrow's link on 9825124384 i will write down in the scroll also Uh, so you can whatsapp me i will send you the link for the tomorrow's pro uh, program if anyone else is also interested then please uh, uh, send me whatsapp oini interesting are you aware that oini can have a neurogenic component to be it can have an immune component to pain oini can be a simple nociceptive pain it could be a neurogenic pain it could actually be a chronic pain so depends on which one you're dealing with your treatment will vary same the mechanism of pain is the same so you have a direct insult or injury to the nervous system but whatever we talk about the pain is the same in all pain cases so the education remains the same the process remains the same the areas involved might differ but a lot of it has the same explanation well to a very big extent we provide dims and sims if 
we have to be very careful of our words because our strong words can actually be very powerful dims and cause a flare up in a chronic pain patient just telling someone it's in your head is enough to cause a flare up that's a very powerful dim just telling someone yes i understand your pain and we can get this sorted is a very powerful thing and put them on the road to recovery so yes we healthcare providers have to be very careful because we can push the patient either side we can be a dim we can definitely be a sim well of course yes person's positivity will make him look for more sims and eventually help reduce the pain well as we spoke of the neuro signature there is no one area all areas together part of the pain experience are the part where the pain is so we cannot say that salamis is the seat of pain the whole neuro signature is the pain so patient with neuro or peripheral neurogenic pain can be treated by neural mobilization and treating the containers or the mechanical tissue interface yes group therapy can be really really useful and it can be very powerful thing well no special tips with older people just make sure that they are all on the same page use language which is easy for them to understand and grasp and accept use activities which are which they are capable of doing no special concerns with elderly people not that they should get more pain because they are older definitely not well in phantom limb pain if you can understand that your neuro signature is the one causing pain then you can help turn off the neuro signature by using mirror therapy if you don't know why your leg is hurting despite not being there you will never be able to get rid of that pain so one you have to introduce the concept of neuro signature that the leg in represented in the brain is the one which is part of the pain experience and yes we can help it through mirror therapy you can definitely give them some hope that this pain can be taken care of so this oa me question is asked by a uh, few other uh, viewers also yes so as i mentioned earlier if it is a jointy pain you have a lot of your electrotherapy manual therapy stretching strengthening exercises if it is neurogenic pain then you have to take care of intrapatellar branch of the saphenous nerve you need to do your sliders or tensioners depending on the irritability and sensitivity and if it is a central sensitization then you need to go on to the explained pain level so that's why i said it all depends on what is the cause of the pain in that oni there could be contribution from nerves it could be a contribution from the brain which people are not aware of but yes it's a very common thing to find these two things being involved with oenies so maybe we can discuss this as some other topic sometime or they could find a lot of information on noija oeni has been discussed over there which sir. page for the website i think so sir yes noy noygroup.com is there a common message we could just write or type type you for them you, to get this please sir you please write in the private chat or else uh, in comment if you can write directly in the comments uh, i am not getting a box in the comment section sir you please write in, in the, the private, private chat sir. yeah i will copy paste it okay So please take. Yeah, send me the noijam.com website. Noijam is the blog, and my email ID. Uh, I I will play in the scroll. Uh, please stay tuned. And so meanwhile, you take a questions answer. Yes. Can I enter the disc prolapse and radiating pain? Yes, of course. With nerves, they can actually give you symptoms away from the area being involved. So a discogenic pain or a lumbar problem. involving the nerve at the lumbar level can give you pain swelling symptoms not only at the ankle but at the knee at the leg at the thigh anywhere along the course of the nerve yes they definitely can 
so this is what we call neurogenic inflammation where the nerve is having the ectopic impulse generating sites a lot of ion channels are firing and the brain is reacting to it as if there is an injury again and giving rise to inflammation to start a healing process so yes this inflammation or this swelling is possible So just a minute. Yeah. So please answer the question. Patient with congenital incident of pain knows what is the problem with their internal organs. So you're talking about someone who is born without the sensation of pain. That's a tough one. Honestly, I don't know how they will feel. But yes, if you can't feel pain, there is no way of knowing what's going wrong with you. Unless there are other physical signs or manifestations in terms of function of the part, it will be really difficult to know. And that's why these are high risk patients. So in a way, this comes back to the point that pain is important for survival. Pain is a protector. If you don't have pain, you're at a high risk of getting injured or being unwell and not even knowing about it. So yes, we have to be very careful watching out for other signs of the organs being involved because pain is not there. So protector meter, I think uh, I will send the sheet to Dr. Bansali and he will email it to everyone who has given the email ID. That way they can have a copy to use in the clinic. Sure, sir. Yes, sir. I think uh, we are done with all the questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sir, there are lots and lots of comments regarding the way you have presented. Everyone has enjoyed a lot. Uh, and everyone is uh, telling thanks to you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, Thank for you. your valuable Thank time you. and guidance. It's really important and it's helpful to all of us, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me over. Thank you. Uh, friends, uh, we will play, sir's introductory video once again and uh, then bye-bye and see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining today. We have a special guest with us today, Dr. Prakash Shah. He is the Director of Physio Health, Pain Management and Performance Enhancement and he is also the Senior Instructor for its Research and Teaching Institute branch where he teaches various courses. He has been practicing for over a decade in India and Australia. He has received his Bachelor's in Physiotherapy from St. G.S. Medical College, K.E.M. Hospital, Mumbai. And he has done his Master's of Orthopedics, Sports and Manual Therapy at the University of South Australia, where he was awarded the Mary Hammond Prize for highest achievement in the Master's program by the Australian Physiotherapy Association and the University of South Australia. He is also certified in Pilates, Western Acupuncture, and Dry Lighting from Australia. He has worked with national and international level athletes of India and Australia. He is also on the panel of Olympic World West and provides treatment to some of India's finest athletes. He is the member of Indian Association of Physiotherapists and is registered to practice in India and Australia. He is Asia's first official instructor for Neuro Orthopedic Institute to take courses on neural mobilization. He has assisted Michelle Shapitals on mobilization of the nervous system held in Mumbai in June 2010. He was the assistant neuro orthopedic institute instructor at Dublin Masterclass in April 2010. He has also assisted on sports taping events organized by Australian Physiotherapy Association in Australia. He has presented on golf mechanics and injury prevention, exercise science laboratory and rehabilitation center, Mumbai. 